Well, good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, and I hope you are having a wonderful and, and safe Memorial Day weekend so far. I just have one announcement uh, for you, and uh, I wish I uh, would have thought of this uh, sooner, but uh, I didn't. But we, we want to uh, remind you all that uh, here at First Church, that we have a uh, parking lot fund, uh, fun drive, that uh, I haven't been uh, pushing, and uh, I want to I want to uh, encourage uh, you if you feel led uh, to uh, to make a don- donation uh, to that uh, fund because I know we don't need the parking lot right now, but uh, there is coming a day we will need that parking lot, I can assure you. And I believe that day is coming soon. So that being said, Debbie is, and Dave is going to uh, do our praise hymn. And now, if you would join me for our call to worship. Let us sing to God, singing praises to our Lord. Let us listen to God, for He has a mighty voice. We know there is great power in our God. His majesty is over all of us, and power is found in the sky. God, You are awesome in how You empower Your people for Your service. At this time, we would take up our offering and uh, I just want to continue to encourage everyone to support their local church with their tithe. And uh, we will continue to uh, have the church open on Monday mornings here at First Church for those uh, folks to uh, drop off their tithe as well. And now Dave is going to play our doxology. now join me for our prayer of confession. Lord God, too often we are hesitant in our proclamation and seek safe and suitable opportunities to speak of our faith. We are half-hearted in our service and reluctant to stand out from the crowd or to attract criticism. Too often we live as if dependent wholly on our own resources, and rely on our perceived skills and modest insights. We look to the clouds for our inspiration in the vain hope of finding You there. Forgive the poverty of our efforts and the frailty of our faith. Open wide our hearts and minds to the imminent presence of our risen 
living and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for our preparation hymn. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can't see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. passage for us this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Luke 24, 44 through 53. These are the words of Jesus to His disciples. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in His name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then He led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up His hands, He blessed them. While He was blessing them, He withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped Him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join me in prayer. Dear God, we have heard the words that You chose for us this morning. And we praise You for those words. 
And we pray for Your, your anointing Spirit to come upon us, preparing us and empowering us, opening our minds and softening our hearts to Your message that You have given Your servant to share. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever wondered why Jesus took the time to return and appear to His disciples after He was resurrected? Why didn't Jesus just ascend back to the Father after being raised from the dead? You say, well, He needed to return to show them He was alive. He needed to give them their great commission. Maybe He wanted to just say goodbye. And these are all possible and reasonable thoughts for His return and appearances. But they are not the real and true reasons He returned and appeared to His disciples before His ascension. If you think about it, Jesus had already informed His disciples about His death and resurrection at least three times before it actually happened. The whole time He was with them, He was teaching them to share His teachings with the world. So He really didn't need to return and appear to them for those reasons. So why did He return and appear to them? Because He needed to re-emphasize and highlight the importance of His death on the cross and His resurrection to the repentance and salvation that He proclaimed to and taught His disciples. Jesus returned and appeared before them to reiterate the the significance of His suffering, death, and resurrection to Old Testament Scripture. How it fulfilled Old Testament Scripture and and needs to be proclaimed. The cross, repentance, and salvation to the world. Jesus did did not want His suffering, His death, and His resurrection to go unused. He didn't want it to be unheard of or wasted. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for the world on that cross on Calvary. He gave His life for you and me. He gave His life for the world because He loved the world. Jesus gave His life up to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. For we are told in 1 John 3.16, we know love by this, that He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Found in John 15.13. And in John 3.16, we are assured, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but have eternal life. This weekend, we celebrate Memorial Day. A holiday set aside not to honor veterans as a whole, but to honor and pay tribute to veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice by giving up their lives for friend and country. This weekend, we honor and pay tribute to husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters who died prematurely because of their love 
for friend and country. On June 21st, 2006, in the Nuristan province of Afghanistan, Staff Sergeant Jared Monty's 16-man patrol came under fire. And one of his men was wounded and fell over a ridge into what the soldiers described as a death zone. Despite the intense firefight and the danger, Jared tried three times to save that soldier. And on his third try, he was killed. He was awarded America's highest honor for heroism, the Medal of Honor. Paul Monty started an organization in his son's memory called Operation Flag for Vets. And their volunteers recently planted 57,000 flags at the Massachusetts National Cemetery. His dad drives Jared's pickup truck with the military decals still on it. He explained, and I quote, It's got his DNA all over it. I love driving it because it reminds me of him. Even though I don't need the truck to remind me of him, I think about him every hour of the day. A Nashville songwriter heard about this story. So he sat down and he wrote a song that country singer Lee Bryce recorded. And it's titled, I Drive Your Truck. And the song earned Song of the Year honors at the 2013 Country Music Awards. The video can be found on YouTube. And it has generated tens of millions of views. And you are encouraged to watch this video on this Memorial Day weekend. This weekend contains stories of men and women whom we honor this weekend. Men and women who gave it all because of their love for friend and country. The words of Jesus in verse 44 is very significant. He says, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that I spoke to you while I was still with you. What what is the meaning of this statement? Isn't He still with them? Isn't He still present? You see, Jesus at this point is not the same Jesus that was with them before His death and resurrection. He is now the resurrected Jesus. He is the heavenly bound Jesus, not the earthly Jesus. He has been glorified and exalted as a result of His death and resurrection. Jesus may have been changed, but His teachings and the Gospel message, however, remains the same. They are the same yesterday, today, and will be the same tomorrow. The Scripture points to Jesus. This brings us to a very important theological aspect of our faith walk. And that is the relevancy of the Old Testament Scripture and how it is connected with the New Testament Scripture. Jesus mentions in the passage that everything written about Him in Moses' law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms needed to be fulfilled. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to bore you with a lot of verse readings, but I do think it is very important for me to share with you some of the many Old Testament Scriptures that were fulfilled and why this fulfillment is significant to the proclamation of the Gospel. Jesus refers to the Law of Moses and the prophets in verse 44. Of course, we know that 
the law of Moses is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So here is some of what Jesus was referring to. In Genesis 3.15, we are told, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The reference to offspring speaks about Jesus. And strike his heel speaks of the crucifixion. In Numbers 21.9, we are told that Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent, the, the, the serpent of bronze and live. When Moses held the bronze serpent on that pole high in the air and they looked upon it, they were saved from death. Jesus was held high on the cross and His death on that cross saves the lives of the world. Deuteronomy 18.15 says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like Me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. Jesus, the prophet of all prophets, came out of a specific lineage that was chosen by God. The prophet Isaiah says, Look, the young woman is with child and will bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Isaiah prophesies the Christmas story the birth of Jesus through Mary, who was a virgin. He is God's Son and has divine authority. Ezekiel foretells in 34.23 the coming of a tender, gentle shepherd, Jesus. He says, I will set up over them one shepherd. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. Micah chapter 5, verses 1-5 through 5, proclaims, But you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, and he shall be the one of peace. Micah prophesizes the birthplace of Jesus, his reign, his lineage, and the ministry of our beloved Savior, Jesus. And the Psalms are full of prophecies of Jesus' coming in life. Psalms 2, 16, 69, 72, 110, and 118 all speak of the coming Messiah, His reign and ministry. But no psalm prophesies Jesus' coming suffering and death in such detail and magnitude as the 22nd Psalm. The psalmist says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The words of Jesus while hanging on the cross, scorned by others and despised by the people, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. These were words about the ridicule and rejection of Jesus as the Messiah as our Lord. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd for dogs are all around me. They divide my clothes for themselves. The psalmist prophesies the crucifixion of Jesus, the puncturing of His side, His parched lips, those that scoffed Him and gambled for His clothes as He hung on that cross. He heard when I cried to Him, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek Him shall praise the Lord. Nations shall worship before Him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, proclaiming His deliverance to a people yet unborn. Psalm 22, 
prophesies the love and outreach of Jesus. The miracles that He would do. His sovereignty, His ministry, and His great commission. This was just some of the Old Testament Scriptures having a prophetic message about Jesus Christ and His ministry. And although it is important to know and understand the story of God's chosen people, Israel, a people who struggled to know and be obedient to God, it is equally important to know and understand that the Scripture, the Old Testament Scripture has another story. The Old Testament story also points to Jesus the Christ. From creation to bondage to exodus to the wilderness journey to the promised land to the destruction and rebuilding of Jerusalem, Israel's story actually points the Israelites and all readers to the Lord and Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And that in a nutshell, is what Jesus was attempting to remind His disciples and and is reminding His readers as well in our passage. That is why the Old Testament is relevant and indeed a critical part of our biblical record. It acts as a precursor to and points its readers to the Gospel message. It points to Jesus and should never be left out or considered irrelevant. So Jesus leads His disciples out to Bethany and He lifts up His hands up in the air and to bless them. While He was blessing them, He was lifted up into the sky carried away from His disciples and into heaven. What an awesome sight that must have been. There were two Bethanies that was important to Jesus. One was located on the east bank of the Jordan River and was where John the Baptist did his baptizing work, including baptizing Jesus. This is where Jesus received the Spirit and His ministry began. The other Bethany is located on on an unseen east slopes of the Mount of Olives, which can be seen from Jerusalem. It was a place where Jesus and His followers would go, would often take refuge to, to get away from angry and threatening crowds during Jesus' ministry. This Bethany was significant to Jesus and His ministry because it was the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. It was where where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. It was Jesus' headquarters the week of His crucifixion. And it was where Jesus was anointed with ointment. Jesus took everyone to this Bethany where acts of love, miracles, and ministry was done. And now it will be where Jesus' ministry will come to an end. Jesus' departure was not meant to be a punishment or sad event. For it was the first step to a new beginning. It would soon become the first step to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It was the first step to a new church and ministry. A ministry of His disciples and all other followers that will be led by the promised Spirit. The ascension of Jesus was to stand for the completed work of Jesus on earth and the passing of the ministry baton to His disciples and others through the Spirit. The ascension of Jesus was to be in an awakening, reminding His disciples and everyone of His 
gospel. You see, just as the Old Testament points to Christ and His gospel, the ascension points all believers back to Christ and His gospel as well. And it is by the help of the Spirit that empowers us to keep our sights on Jesus and His Gospel. The Scripture points us to Jesus Christ, a shepherd, a miracle worker, a counselor, our living Lord and Savior. This Memorial Day, we we honor and pay tribute to all those veterans who died for our freedom. For Christians, every day should be a memorial day, celebrating and revering the act of Jesus' suffering, dying on that cross, and giving up His life so the world could be free from sin. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can take care of that this morning. If you have fallen away from the Lord and would like to rededicate yourself to the Lord, you can also take care of that this morning. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Lord, I believe You are the Son of God and that You died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I admit that I am a sinner and I need forgiveness through faith in You. I now turn from my sins and receive You as my Lord and Savior. Thank You and praise to You, O Lord, for saving me. If you would like to rejoin Jesus this morning, then pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Lord, forgive me for my shortcomings. I repent and pray at this time for You to forgive me, for I have sinned against You. Strengthen and equip me to live as You have taught me to live and to follow You in word and deed. Thank You, Lord, for your unlimited and abundant grace. If you have prayed either of these prayers with me, you can be assured of your salvation. That Jesus has become your Lord and Savior. Or has renewed your commitment with Him. You are now filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit will point you to Jesus. And we welcome you into the family of God and encourage you to find and regularly attend a Bible-based church. Pray with me. O merciful God, Your mercy and grace has been demonstrated throughout Your Word. You have always kept Your promise through Your prophets. Father, help us all to know and remember that Your love for us is unmeasurable and indescribable. We thank You for Your direction and guidance to our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
We praise You and thank You that You were willing to incarnate Yourself and make that ultimate sacrifice for a world that did not fully love You back. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Our closing hymn is I'll Fly Away. before before we have the benediction thank you Dave Debbie and Matthew for the work you put in uh, to put this service together and get it uh, recorded and posted and uh, I thank you all for uh, tuning in and joining us this morning and I hope and pray that you will continue to have a happy and safe Memorial Day celebration let us have the benediction As we honor those veterans who died for our nation this weekend, let us honor daily the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Shall we go forth sharing the Gospel message and pointing people to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.